Good morning. I want to uh, announce a change. I am changing the Advent study from Wednesday to Tuesday this week. So if you didn't come because, uh, it, didn't come because it was on Wednesday, it's going to be on Tuesday. And I'm making a Tuesday at 7, same, same, same time. Instead of it being Wednesday, uh, this is the second of the Advent study on John the Baptist, second and last. It's at 7 o'clock with dessert. Um, but it'll be on Tuesday instead of on Wednesday. I did this because you have an opportunity. We've been invited by Faith United Methodist Church to, uh, the women are invited. Sorry, guys, you're not invited. Um, but this is the United Methodist women are inviting the women of the congregation to go over on Wednesday night, the 14th. That's why I'm bumping it, uh, at 7 o'clock uh, to hear Reverend Faith Fowler uh, who is, um, I, if some of you are familiar with her work already, um, and uh, she has a, um, a multi-million dollar ministry, United Methodist Ministry in downtown Detroit with Cass Community Social Services. Um, and so she'll be uh, talking about what's going on down there. It will be a fundraising opportunity. Um, we, we're invited, if we, if we have enough people, we can have a table by ourselves. Otherwise, though, I know Paulette and I are going to go over. If you're interested in going, let me know today so that I can say, hey, you know, we'd like a table and, and then, you know, we provide, I, I'll provide lunch for, what, too loud? Oh, no, it's, it's, it's not a cost to go. It's, it's you bring your checkbook and as the spirit leads you, you write the check. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be so, yeah. No, she, she's looking, she's going to be looking for, you know, whatever, you know, whatever God leads you to give, okay? It's not an in-the-door thing, but it's a, a, you know, cost. It's free to go. I'll provide dessert for, or, or if we're split up in tables. But, you know, she's, uh, I, I was sitting with, Jim and I were sitting with her uh, yesterday um, at the pastor, clergy, and spouse Hang, uh, breakfast with the district superintendent, and she was talking about, you know, in the in the midst of a, you know, 24 million dollar fundraising campaign for all the visioning of things that she's got uh, wants to do in downtown Detroit. So yeah, it's not a, it's you know, so like that's why I said bring your checkbook, and, and uh, so anyway, um, but that's a she's a wonderful speaker and has an amazing um, ministry downtown. So there's that opportunity on Wednesday at 7, not here, but at Faith United Methodist Church. So tell me if you're interested, um, and I'll get back to Cindy about, um, um, you know, what, how many of you want to come. So, and hopefully uh, next time, uh, next year, they'll open it up to uh, the male gender as well. Uh, other than to say, a week from this Wednesday, we're going to have a Longest Night Blue Christmas service, and of course, uh, Christmas Eve is coming up quick. Today is two weeks from Christmas. I want you to consider inviting your family, friends, acquaintances, strangers, anyone on the street to join us for, Christ for Advent worship, for Christmas Eve worship, and even for Christmas Day worship. So with that, I turn it over to Jeff, and uh, we'll have some music as we, as we worship and, and uh, continue our service.
Please join me in the call to worship. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice before the God of all peoples. For God comes to touch the earth. Let us open our hearts in worship and trust and offer our lives in willing service. Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds to experience the living Christ here and now. Help us to worship him with joy and gratitude. Please stand as you are able for our opening hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Number 220 in the hymnal and the words are on the screen. The Old Testament lesson is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 35. Hear the word of the Lord through Isaiah to the nation of Israel and to, to us in this day and place. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution he will come to save you. Then, the, then will the eyes of the blind be open and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there, and those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, 
and sorrow and, see, and sighing will flee away. Here ends the reading of the, of the prophet Isaiah. Uh, Paulette will lead us in the lighting of the Advent wreath and the liturgy for that. Please join me in the liturgy. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ, our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O oh God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O oh, come, Lord Jesus, and be present with us this day, we pray. Help, help us, us to, to rejoice in you today and every day, and help us to be your faithful followers. Amen. Our hymn is the Advent Song, verse 3. Our scripture from Matthew comes from the 11th chapter, verses 2 through 15. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out in the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been raiding it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. 
And if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Um, John the Baptist was not having a good day when he sent out word by his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? Evidently, King Herod had put John into prison shortly after John had baptized Jesus. Now, according to Matthew's gospel, when John the, baptized, John the Baptist baptized Jesus, it was under protest. For John had told Jesus, I need to be baptized by you, so why are you coming to me? And that, came shortly, and, and that came shortly after John the Baptist had announced to the crowds of people flocking to him for baptism. He had, John had said, after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, it seems very clear that at the time of Jesus' baptism, John the Baptist, Baptist recognized Jesus as the one more powerful than himself, the Messiah whose coming he had predicted. Indeed, there is absolutely no doubt about that fact when we looked at John's gospel. And here John tells his disciples when he saw Jesus coming towards him, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing was that he might be revealed to Israel. And then John added this testimony. I saw the spirit come down from heaven and as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but he the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Holy Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and testify that this is God's chosen one. Again, words of John the Baptist about Jesus. So how did John get from this certainty about Jesus at the time of his baptizing the Lord to questioning if Jesus was ne what now was indeed the Messiah. I think it's partly the fact that John had been in prison 
for a while. We don't know exactly how long or under what condition John was imprisoned by King Herod, but I'm sure they were not good conditions. They didn't coddle prisoners in the first century AD. And besides, prison can play games with your mind, especially if John had been held in solitary confinement for a while, even though we know that from scripture that he had interactions both with his disciples and with King Herod. But it seemed that John had, had missed out on being out in the world almost from the beginning when, when, John, when Jesus began his public ministry. So that could also have contributed to John's doubt at that point in his confinement. At any rate, I think that, that Jesus dealt gently with John in telling John's disciples to go back and report to John that the, the blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who are, have leprosy have are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised to life, and the good news is preached to the poor. And with those words, Jesus summarized much of his amazing public ministry, although he had preached to rich and poor alike. And then next, Jesus gently challenged John to put aside any of his doubts or jealousy by saying, blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. The New Living Translation Bible translates that verse, God blesses those who are not offended by me, which perhaps gets more to the heart of the matter. Too many people were offended by Jesus' incredible popularity or by the words he spoke and what he did. But I trust that John the Baptist was not one of them. In my opinion, John just needed some encouragement, and Jesus kindly gave it to him and then, and then praised him to the crowd around him, calling John a prophet, even more than a prophet, because John was the one about whom Scripture had, had written the one who, that one will, who will be a me messenger for God sent ahead of the Messiah. For instance, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, the prophet Malachi recorded these words he received from God. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come says the Lord Almighty. Now it's true that in biblical times, many of the Jews expected the prophet Elijah to return to earth before the Messiah came. And that's why in, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 14 and 15, which Paul read, Jesus declared about John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah to come. Whoever has ears, let him hear. You see, Jesus knew that not everyone would accept or recognize John the Baptist as the Elijah figure that was predicted by Scripture to come before the, the Messiah. Just, as Jesus, just like Jesus also knew that not everyone would accept himself as that prophesied Messiah and Lord, even though he clearly fulfilled the wonderful prophecies recorded in Isaiah chapter 35 and many elsewhere. I, in Isaiah chapter 35, Isaiah, or God had predicted through Isaiah, had predicted God's coming to earth, accompanied by his performance of all sorts of miracles, all of which Jesus performed during his earthly sojourn, with the exception of all that stuff about the desert blooming and the crocus shouting for joy. Scripture does not record that creation itself was transformed by Christ's first coming, but it will be radically transformed and recreated with Christ's second coming. And of course, the blind and the deaf and the lame and the lepers and all the sick, sick that Jesus healed rejoice when he healed them by the power of God. And furthermore, those who accepted Christ's words, his message of God's grace and forgiveness through, through faith in him, also rejoiced and celebrated Jesus as their Messiah and Lord. My friends, this Advent, we too can share in the joy of knowing that God came to earth in the person of Jesus Christ and that salvation is available to us through faith in him. We can also rejoice in all the miracles that Jesus Christ has done in the past for us and for others. 
And we can rejoice in the knowledge that Jesus is still with us by the Spirit as our risen Lord, still working miracles among us and blessing us with his divine presence and love and power and, yes, his joy. According to Jesus in John's Gospel, we can find joy in obeying Jesus as our Lord and Master. You may know that Jesus said to his disciples, as recorded in John chapter 15, verse 10 through 12, I have loved you, even as my Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey me, you remain in my love, just as I obey the, my Father and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. I command you to love each other in the same way I have loved you. So it seems, my friends, that, that we can and will find joy this Advent season and all year round in understanding that Jesus loves us, that God loves us, and then in joyful obedience responding Responding to Christ's message by, by focusing our efforts on loving others just as Jesus has loved us. That will bring us joy, the fullness of joy that Jesus wants us to have when we let Christ's love flow through us to others and when we accept it for ourselves and believe it for ourselves. That doesn't mean that we won't ever have times when our faith may be a little bit shaky or, when we, or that we won't have times when doubts may arise like they did for John the Baptist. But if we remind ourselves of just who Jesus was and is and how he fulfilled those, the most amazing prophecies found in the scripture of the God who would come and walk among us, then we can truly celebrate Christ's birth with the kind of faith that honors Jesus and the kind of obedience that serves him joyfully and is in turn rewarded with joy. Friends, we can see the glory of God and the majesty of our God in his son, Jesus Christ, if we will have the eyes to see it. He is the God who came to save us and may everlasting joy be upon our heads and in our hearts as we worship him. May our mourning turn into dancing and our muttering into praise. Yes, we may mourn our losses of loved ones and of other disappointments and losses of this life. But let us never grieve as those who have no hope, for we have the hope of everlasting joy with Jesus Christ and with God the Father and Spirit. Joy that comes from knowing we are loved and not alone, because Jesus is with us. Joy that comes from serving him. Joy that comes from enjoying all the many blessings that God has shared with us because we are his beloved children. Joy to the world. And may joy, God's joy live in us and be, be, be spread through us to others in need of the message of God's grace and love and forgiveness. Amen. I invite you now to stand for that boy child of Mary, number 241 in your hymnal as well as on the screen. <laughs>
Oh God, as we lift up our hearts to you this morning, we give you thanks for the opportunity to be together in worship and to sustain one another with our love and support. We pray for all those who are in need of healing, uh, all those folks that are on our prayer list that need your continued healing and blessing, Lord, whether it's of mind or body or spirit. We also lift up those who we uh, have that are not on a list that we name in our hearts that are in need of your healing blessing, Lord. We know that, that, um, that grief, especially during these holidays, is so difficult. And we pray that you would be with Lynn and Caroline and, and Rena and Tim and their family and, and uh, Jan and Lee Wynn and their family and, of course, all of Caroline's family and, and, and Lynn's family and their recent losses of loved ones. We pray that you might give them the assurance of your, of your presence and your peace and comfort and strength. Be with all those who grieve in these, in these times and wrap your loving arms around them, Lord. We know there are so many that are in need this day, and so we pray for all those who are struggling to have enough food or proper clothing or shelter for those who are refugees or whether from violence or poverty. Lord, we pray for all those in desperate need and help us to know what you would have us do to help and guide our hearts and our hands to do so. Lord, we pray that for the leaders of the nations, we pray for peace in, in the Ukraine and elsewhere around the world. And Lord, we pray that you might bring peace into our hearts and homes where we are, when we are troubled, whether for, for whatever reason, Lord. We pray for all those relationships that are stressed and struggling in these holiday times and long before that. Help us to be peacemakers who forgive. We ask all this and so much no, more in the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray to you, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Paulette will lead us in the offertory prayer, and I just want to remind anyone who's watching online and hasn't contributed that we welcome your gifts and offerings, and you can mail them to the church or show up during office hours and drop off a check. Redeeming God, you sent us your messenger, John the Baptist, to prepare our hearts and souls for the coming of Christ. Multiply these gifts to echo his message of your greatness and glory. Open our ears to the needs of your people shrouded in depression and despair. Use our voices to tell your stories and to lead others into the community of Christian fellowship. Let our actions of faithful giving be a beacon of our complete devotion to your guidance in our lives. We pray to your glory forever and ever. Amen.
choir and our volunteer choir director, Diane Hiddleston. So, Roberta said, you know, we really should have a, a, a volunteer, a, a recognition of volunteers, which of course she's right. And I, I, I want to, no, I don't see Cheryl Bird here, but I want to start out by uh, us all giving a big round of appreciation to our treasurer, Ira Neubauer, <laughs> and to Cheryl for all the work they do week by week, and, and also the counters. I don't know who you are, because you get locked behind closed doors. Yeah, just Cheryl this? Okay, and, and, and to our counters, for, for those who are, are counting, for all that, you know, taking care of the finances, we are very appreciative. Um, I don't, Tim Whalen's not here, but I want to thank him and all who are serving on our, on our church council who come to the meetings and, and help to, to direct the ministry of the church. Uh, of course, part of, part of the church council is our trustee chair, Jerry Ward, and um, all who, who serve on trustees or who've helped take care of the building in any way. Thank you to all of them, because this is a big building, and a lot of you who aren't, aren't officially on trustees, like I know Brace does a lot with, you know, and all, all you folks who are helping in any way. I also want to thank our very uh, talented uh, staff parish chair, Paulette Wilson, and all those who serve on the committee with her um, to uh, take care of, of, of you know, issues between the congregation and me and, and do all sorts of stuff, uh, and we're just very thankful for them. I want to also say a big, we, you know, we need to give a big thank you to Todd Southers, who has served all year as our, as our greeter, as our usher, who comes in to, I mean, I was here on Easter doing bulletins at like quarter to, he showed, he was here at eight o'clock in the morning. Two hours, he's here making coffee, doing all sorts of stuff, checking things out. Big thank you to, to Todd. Also want to thank all of our liturgists this year. Um, we've had Paul Ladd and Lynn and Carol Patton and Greg Muffet and Margaret and, and my husband Jim. A big thank you to all, all who've, who've helped as, as liturgists. Um, you know, ministry is a team sport. It's not, and, and we, I, I think we generally play well together and serve the Lord well together. I, of course, also want to, to thank our office volunteers, those who have stepped up and, and uh, helped in the office to have uh, a, a physical presence on Monday and Thursdays when I'm not here, and that includes um, um, Margaret Creek, uh, Paul, wait, where am I? Margaret Creekmore and Diane Hiddleston, Ben and Lynn Lash, and Rocky and Roberta as, as well helped out earlier in the year. Big thank you to all of our office volunteers. Thank you. And also our coffee hour hosts and hostesses. You know, um, you know that's a, a big job, and we are thankful for all of you for, for the, maybe you didn't make it, but maybe you helped pay for it. <laughs> so thank you to all our coffee, our hosts and hostesses. Uh, and also our communion steward, Karen Roberts, and, and all the stuff she does with the altar gear. Thank you to, to her as well. Um, and a, a big thank you to all of our ChristNet lunch volunteers who help make lunches for the homeless. Thank you to all those who have helped. And of course, all of our Wyandot Soup Kitchen volunteers who helped, you know, assemble or pay for and make lunches for them. A big thank you to them as well. And also, um, my, I, wanna, I want to uh, thank my, my, my personal tech support uh, person, my husband Jim, who helps when, when uh, I don't know how to do stuff on the computer so that it looks good for you. So <laughs> thank you to him. He, he especially uh, needs patience because he deals with me. So uh, anyway, uh, and I also want to uh, I want to say thank you to all of our outdoor helpers, our gardening helpers, uh, Pat McCall and Joy Reno and Deb Barnes, and of course Todd out there. You know all the making the outside look nice. And thank you to all those folks. Um, and I want to thank you um, for all those folks who prayed for one another, who sent cards, who who. Uh, called to give um, to give words of encouragement and love and support who were part of a you know I'm not the only one giving pastoral care and support and love and thank you to all of you who've reached out in any way 
to, to help one another and love one another. And I also um, want to uh, thank, thank, thank those for all of you who, who voluntarily gave out of your financial resources to help this church, Christ, Christ Church, and our ministry through this body of, of Christ. Thank you to all of you. And the, the extra anyone I missed category. What? What? Who did I miss? What? Oh, oh yes. I, I was doing volunteer. I was doing, and we also, you know, we're going to recognize our paid staff, but, but I also have at the top. We do want to recognize our paid staff as well. Jeff Burke, our wonderful organist. And, and Jack and, and Karen, who helps take care of the, you know, keep our church looking so clean. And of course, Jackie Hull, our media specialist, who, who Jackie, don't edit on any of this out. And uh, thank you to her for getting the, recording the services and getting them online. And so that more folks uh, would have the opportunity to um, see what we do here and, and to worship with us, if not in person, at home, maybe in their PJs, who knows. But uh, thank you to, to all of them as well. And God bless. Thank you. So after the benediction, we'll sing Infant Holy, Infant Lowly, and then uh, Jeff will kick into some, uh, some uh, postlude music for us. And uh, I know Rock and Roberta are already out there. Besides the cookies, I'm told that they bought some submarine sandwiches. So we're going to have kind of a volunteer appreciation, you know, you know, nice lunchy thing going along with those Christmas cookies. So you might not get as big a sugar high from, uh, but you can go and unleash your inner cookie monster uh, in, in just a few minutes. So may God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, comfort, and keep you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.